so today we will prove two important uh, we will talk about two important sequences and their convergence one of the sequence that we will be establishing the limit of is for any c if you have if we take c to be any positive real number then we will establish that this limit c power 1 upon n is equal to 1 and another thing that we are going to establish is the convergence of this sequence n power 1 over n and here we will also establish that its limit is also equals to 1 but before i jump to the uh, proof of these two results uh, i need a result i need a lemma which is going to be a crucial for the proof of these two results the lemma states that suppose you have a sequence suppose xn is a sequence and x be any real number such that we have this estimate of the nearness or the distance of the terms of sequence x from x and this is less than or equal to some c times a n and for every n where where this c is some positive real number and a n is a sequence of positive numbers and this sequence is such that it converges to zero so you have this estimate if you are able to get this inequality for some sequence then this sequence will be converging to x then it says that the sequence x and converges to x here we have shown we have i have written that this inequality holds for every n but uh, even if finitely many for finitely many terms it doesn't if it doesn't hold for finitely many terms then still the sequence will be a convergent but anyway let's let's look at the proof of this first uh, uh, so we have uh, we have to establish that this sequence converges to x and let us take some arbitrary positive number epsilon and then using the convergence of the sequence a n i can say that there exists some number a natural number depending upon epsilon such that we will have this since it's a positive number uh, i can write mod of a n to be a n to be less than epsilon upon c i'm going to take it to be epsilon upon c then then let us give it some name let me name it as first uh, this is the inequality that is given to us in hypothesis then from inequality first uh, for n greater than or equal to n epsilon and since this inequality second is true for every n larger than or equal to n epsilon we have mod of x n minus x which is less than or equal to c times a n and we have this is a less than c times epsilon upon c which is equal to epsilon hence this is clearly that for any epsilon you choose you are going to get a positive number n epsilon such that the distance of x n from x is going to be smaller than epsilon and hence by the definition of the convergence of the sequence it follows that it follows that this sequence x n converges it converges to x and this proves this small result and uh, it has far-reaching consequences and the first that i'm going to establish is that for any positive number c the sequence c power 1 by 1 by n converges to 1 
so uh, let us take this first thing that we have to talk about is that limit c to power 1 by n is equal to 1 where c is any positive number so i'm going to divide this c into two parts first uh, i'm going to say c c has two possibilities either c is greater than or equal to 1 and in case 1 i will take c to be greater than or equal to 1 and in the second case we will discuss the you know, scenario where c lies between strictly 0 and 1 so what happens now c is greater than or equal to 1 and uh, you see that if c is 1 then clearly the limit is 1 because you are going to get the constant sequence then clearly this limit c power 1 by n is 1 so let us assume now that c is strictly greater than 1 c is strictly greater than 1 and see what happens then so now c is positive number and clearly uh, it's going it's not difficult to see that it's power 1 by n is also going to be greater than 1 it cannot be equal to 1 for any n okay so if, you, if this is a this is a number which is greater than 1 and so this is a number which is greater than 1 means it is 1 plus some another number some another positive number for some positive number hn uh, let us since you have c being a positive number and uh, on right hand side also you have positive numbers taking this positive power and power uh, and roots what i'm going to get i'm going to get c is equal to one plus hn whole power n and uh, if i expand it by using binomial expansion i will have one plus n hn plus n into n minus one half hn squared up to hn power n and uh, i can then clearly you have every term in this sum as a positive number so this has to be greater than one plus n h n so we what we have we have c being strictly greater than one plus n h n that is to say that this c minus one upon n is strictly greater than h n or or we can say that hn is strictly less than 1 in c minus 1 upon okay c minus 1 upon let me let me write this c minus 1 c minus 1 upon n now we have this inequality now and where we are going to apply the lemma uh, i can uh, if, you, if you match it with the lemma i can write this inequality as uh, hn is a sequence of real numbers i can write this hn this is a sequence of positive numbers so this is going to be hn and it is strictly less than some constant let this constant be some capital c times so an and here where, where where i take this capital c to be this c minus one and clearly c being c you have taken this small small c a number which is greater than one and hence this capital c is a positive number and a n is a sequence one upon n and we very well know that this sequence goes to zero hence you have everything uh, uh, ready to invoke the lemma here and hence from lemma it follows that from lemma it follows that the sequence of hns goes to zero as n goes to infinity and what it implies then then clearly this limit c to power one by n minus one which will be equal to limit hn and it goes to zero and that is equivalent to say that 
limit c to power 1 by n is equal to 1. So in this case, it is quite obvious here. Let's look at, at the other case uh, where you have a c a number when c lies between strictly between 0 and 1. Then what you can do? Then the 1 by c is a positive number. Uh, not, not only positive, sorry, it's, it's larger than 1 indeed. This number is larger than 1 implies indeed 1 by c to power 1 by n is also greater than 1. And hence, uh, proceeding on the same line as we did in the previous case, I, what I get? I get 1 c to power 1 by n is equal to 1 plus some, let me take here instead of hn, gn, and uh, this is true uh, for all n, and where gns are positive numbers. Then, again, what we have to do, I have to take this 1 by c to be some number, and I have to take the positive and through to of both sides and I will get this to be g n power n and again by using the inequality uh, that we uh, that I established in the previous um, case one that that inequality is also known as uh, Bernoulli's inequality then that inequality will give it to be a strictly greater than one plus n g n okay now what do we have i have one upon c greater than one plus n g n are equivalently i can see that c is less than one upon one plus n g n okay you have this inequality let let let, let me call this something equation three all right, I, I, instead of uh, labeling it right now, let me uh, further simplify this and let me further make it smaller and it is going to be less than 1 upon n g n. So now, now let me label this, let, let us label now it as equation 3, inequality 3. Now, let's go back. Let's look at this number c power 1 by n minus 1. c power 1 by n is 1 upon 1 plus g to power n. But instead, we have since the c to power n is less than 1, we better to write 1 minus c to power n. That is a better thing to write so that we have we remain positive everywhere. We have this thing. This is 1 minus. Then I can write it to be c to power n is 1 upon 1 plus gn. And if I use this further simplification to simplify this number, it comes out to be gn upon 1 plus gn. Okay, this is it. And what do we have? Taking this the modulus of this number, c to power 1 by n, this is equal to mod of gn upon 1 plus gn. And since you have the denominator being a positive number, and so I can drop it to be, everything is positive there indeed. And this thing is going to be less than gn. So I, what do I have? I have 1 minus c power 1 by n being less than gn. And this is true for every n. And now I have an estimate for this gn. And this g, estimate for this gn can be uh, seen from this equation 3. This is going to be less than 1 upon nc. And so this is less than 1 upon n c and which can be again labeled as some constant capital C times a n where you, you keep this c to be 
is constant one upon small c and the sequence a n and clearly this capital c is a positive number and here a n is one by n and this sequence goes to zero as n goes to infinity hence again invoking once again the lemma what i get i get that this seek with this limit of uh, sequence c to power one by n is equal to one and this completes all the possibilities of the value of c and in every possible value the limit is same there is the one so this is one of the result that we establishes now let's go to the next part and in next we have to take as instead of c i have to take n and then the, we will have the power n to power n okay i, I will go to the next slide indeed why to rub here yeah, it's working here well okay now next i have to establish this thing that uh, limit n to power one by n is equal to one and uh, again uh, we will proceed some way uh, similar on this uh, bit of similar lines not exactly whole of there is no whole similarity of the proof that we did for c power one by n uh, but uh, there is some kind of similarity mm, for its proof uh, note that i have this thing n to power one by n greater than or equal to one for every n or so better would be if we skip n equals to one because n equals to one you have you don't you can skip one term you don't have any trouble you will be left with a tail and the limit of tail and the sequence is always same so better to say that uh, and or, or i can say that n power one by n is greater than one for all n greater than or equal to two and since this is again a number which is larger than one so that number has to be again some number one plus some number uh, let it be tn this is true for l and get them equal to two now again taking the positive square root uh, positive nth root so i'm going to get this one plus tn power one i'm uh, sorry it power n and this is true for every n greater than or equal to two now using again the binomial expansion you get one plus n times tn plus n into n minus one how tn square plus one plus tn to power n and now i'm going to uh, and drop all the terms of this sum on the right hand side except the term at the first and the third place and that will give me this to be greater than because everything is positive every term in this sum is positive is greater than one plus n into n minus one upon two t n square so what i have i have this to be greater than or equal to zero and uh, from here i can see that this thing comes out to be n minus one is greater than n into n minus one half times tn square and this is true for n greater than or equal to two so you can cancel out this n minus one from right hand side and left hand side since it is a non-zero quantity you, you will be left with two upon n is greater than tn square are equivalently writing in tn square is less than 2 upon n and this is true for every n greater than equal to 2 now now uh, i'm going to get back to this archimedean property and uh, i'm for, i'm going to apply first choose epsilon to be a positive number and then i'm going to get back to this archimedean property and that will be applied on the number two and epsilon square so by archimedean property by archimedean property uh, i can find 
a natural number obviously that will depend upon epsilon and they, you can call it as depending upon two also such that because epsilon two i'm going to keep fixed so better to call it a depending only on epsilon such that i have this thing that two will be less than n let this be only n times epsilon square so this gives me a an estimate that 2 upon n is less than epsilon square and indeed indeed now i'm going to get that 2 upon n is less than epsilon square for all n greater than or equal to n so for this particular choice of capital n um, and from this inequality 4 here i have this thing thus from inequality 4 and for any n larger than or equal to n i'm going to get this square of tn less than epsilon square this uh, tns are positive this epsilon is a positive number taking positive square root gives me that this tn is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to so now now what do you do now i can write this as tn minus zero which is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n and this matches the definition of the convergence of a sequence and hence it follows that the limit of this sequence tn or, or let me let me instead of writing this limit of t n and uh, let me hence let us look at this uh, n to power 1 by n n to power 1 by n minus 1 which is equal to t n and this is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n and this matches the definition of the convergence of the sequence and hence this means that sequence n to power 1 by n converges and it converges to the limit 1 as n goes to infinity so this is all about the convergence of these two important sequences as we saw we had to use some different ways one way at once before you can see for you for proving that this limit is one as n goes to infinity and for any positive number c we required the lemma and we required the Bernoulli inequality also and for proving that n power whereas for proving the convergence of this limit we required the lemma also uh, implicitly not explicitly and uh, but we required archimedean property and we required Bernoulli inequality also